Hello everybody, this is Mr. Hebner. Hopefully you are having a wonderful day. I am here today to talk to you about the different parts of an atom. And I'm going to go through your note sheet with you. Um, we can do it together. But uh, first of all, an atom is composed of subatomic particles. So John Dalton was incorrect when he said that atoms are the smallest unit of matter they can actually get smaller. So they are composed of protons, neutrons, and electrons, and you can get smaller than that, but that's beyond this course. We're just gonna stick with the basics, protons, neutrons, and electrons. So first of all, we have the nucleus. You can see right um, in our note sheet, the nucleus is the center of an atom. It's where the majority of an atom's mass is found, and it's composed of protons and neutrons, both being uh, subatomic particles. So as we say right here, we can say protons are uh, positively charged particles. I'll spell check it later. And uh, they have uh, one AMU, and AMU stands for atomic mass units. And atomic mass units, it's a system based off of carbon-14 that um, we don't have to worry about it, but basically chemists have created a scale to um, kind of unify and uh, make sense of um, something that is super, super, super small. And if you look it up, the actual mass of a proton, we can do that right now, mass of proton, oh, I missed it right here, is 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27th kilograms. It's virtually zero. It's super, super, super small. So that's really annoying to have to work with all of that when you're working with nuclear chemistry. So what people have done is created the atomic mass unit scale based experimentally off of carbon-14. So uh, that makes very conveniently about 1 AMU the mass of a proton. If we skip to neutrons, they have also around uh, 1, oh my gosh, 1, AMU, and uh, as their name kind of implies, neutral charge. So they don't have a plus or minus, they are neutrally charged, which would mean that our nucleus has an overall positive charge, which is what uh, Ernest Rutherford discovered in his gold foil experiment. Um, he discovered a nucleus because of its positive charge. All right, then we have atomic number. So we talked about this a little bit before when we uh, did organic chemistry, but uh, atomic number is the number of protons in an atom. And on the periodic table, I've got this really great periodic table from uh, ptable.com. It's amazing, has a lot of information on it, but always the atomic number is usually at the top, or in this case the top left. We got one, three, eleven. So hydrogen has one proton, lithium has three, sodium has eleven. What happens if you add a proton to sodium? Will it still be sodium? No, it'll now be magnesium. So the proton is uh, very unique in the fact that it determines basically the element. Um, so sodium is always going to have eleven protons. Just kind of going off a tangent, this resource is awesome. We can go to properties. So there are some questions on your practice sheet that, uh, for example, are looking at melting point. So what if we wanted to figure out the melting point of beryllium? Well, it's 1560 Kelvin would be the melting point. So there's a whole bunch of different information on here. When we start talking about electron configuration, uh, orbital filling diagrams, this will make more sense. And this is a very, very nice resource to kind of show all of the different uh, arrows, and that'll make sense later. I'll come back to that when we get to orbital filling diagrams. And there's stuff about isotopes, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. But for now, atomic number is the number of protons, top left number. All right, scrolling down. Ooh, mass number. That sounds kind of like atomic number. It's a little bit different. So the mass number is the sum of the protons and neutrons. So every element is going to have, or every atom is going to have a different mass number. 
depending upon how many protons and neutrons it has. Can you have two carbon atoms that have different mass numbers? Yes, you can. And those are called isotopes. But before we do that, let's do a quick example of a mass number. Let's say we've got um, lithium. Lithium, we're going to call it lithium-7. You can do lithium-7, or you can um, write the mass number and the atomic number in a different way. It's hard to show it, so um, I'll do that in a different video. But let's say we got lithium-7. That's the mass number. What's the atomic number or the number of protons? Well, we can look on the periodic table and it says 3. 3 is the atomic number. So we do 3 plus x equals mass number. So protons plus neutrons equals mass number. We can then determine how many neutrons we have. And that's we're going to do some of those practice together in the practice sheet. But what do we do? We subtract 3 from both sides. What's 7 minus 3? It's 4. So we would have 4 neutrons in this case. All right, so going back, atomic number is the number of protons found in an atom. Mass number is the sum of protons and neutrons found within a particular uh, atom. And let's just skip down to atomic mass. So we got atomic number, mass number, and atomic mass. Atomic mass is the weighted average mass of the isotopes. Oh, we got a little vocab term, isotopes. So talking about what is an isotope. An isotope is atoms of the same element that have different numbers of neutrons. If they're the same element, do they have the same number of protons? Yes. The only thing that's different about them is the number of neutrons that they have. All right, let's get to symbolizing. So we said that isotopes are atoms of the same element that have different number of neutrons. How do we write them? So I'm going to go onto the document camera because I can write a lot quicker than uh, typing. And uh, why don't we just do carbon 14 and carbon 12. Zoom up on those guys. These are two different isotopes. And we said that the mass number is the number that comes after the element symbol. And there's another way of writing this. We, let's do carbon 12. So what you're going to do is write the element symbol. And then before it, in the superscript, a little number. And that's going to be the mass number, 12. And then below it, we're going to put the atomic number. And the atomic number, we go to our periodic table for carbon, is 6. So here we go. We're going to put a little 6 there. And this is another way of writing an isotope. 12 over 6, mass number over atomic number, carbon. How we're going to write carbon-14, this is a different isotope, same way, the element symbol, and in the superscript, the mass number, 14, and below it, the atomic number. And we already found that carbon has an atomic number of 6. So these are both atoms of carbon. They both have 6 protons, but what's different is carbon-14 has two more neutrons than carbon-12. So they are called isotopes. All right, so just recapping, we've got um, protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus. Protons are positively charged. Neutrons are zero charge. They both have an atomic mass unit of one. And I did forget to mention electron down here. Electrons are found outside of the nucleus. And they are super, super, super small. 
um, virtually uh, zero AMU. They do have a mass, but it's significantly smaller than a proton or a neutron. And the charge is negative charge. Negative charge. And they're floating around, flying around the nucleus. And we're going to be talking about those more specifically um, in lessons that are coming up. So there it is. Protons, neutrons, electrons are subatomic particles. Atomic number is the number of protons. The mass number is the sum of the protons and neutrons. And if they happen to have different numbers of neutrons, then they are called isotopes. And the atomic mass is the weighted average mass of all of the isotopes. And uh, we'll do another lesson on finding the atomic mass later. But we've already talked about atomic mass when talking about moles, molar mass. The atomic mass is the number at the bottom, 6.94 for lithium. And it's a weighted average mass of all the different isotopes. Some isotopes will be lithium-7, some will be lithium-6, you might have lithium-8. A um, whole bunch of different possibilities depending upon how many neutrons each specific lithium atom has. And that's it for now. I don't want to keep it longer than 10 minutes, although I did. Sorry about that. Hope you have a great day. And I have to find the pause button. Here it is.